Okay guys, this is my review of the 3D print for Deckard's gun. This is uh, from Blade Runner. This is Blaster, whatever you want to call it. You can print off the um, assembly instructions and the parts list, along with downloading all the files from my mini factory. I'll leave a link in the description below. The guy that made this did a great job. Credit to him. If you get the design, buy it. You don't have to buy it, it's free. But you know, you could leave the guy a tip. Okay, so I want to I want to debunk. The main purpose of this is to debunk um, the amount of time it's going to take, and the quality, and, the, and you know the numbers involved, and what you have to do here. So I, I want to show you something from YouTube real quick before I get started because this really inspired me to actually go ahead and uh, review this print. Now, on my computer. You can see this goofball, and his name is Andrew Sink, and he says this. Listen closely. He'd been downloaded for 3D printing. Sure enough, Andrew Forrester on Mini Factory had one available. So I started printing it at 12 noon, and I was finished. It was fully assembled by 9 p.m. that day. Uh, all right. This guy, this goofball claims that he printed 46 parts in 9 hours. All right, and that <laughs> he had it fully assembled and everything in nine hours. Now, if you look at the picture, you can see he's got LED lights in it, and then inside of this, trust me, there's a little circuit board, and he's he's gone ahead and did the handle in like uh, wood uh, filament, and then different color schemes and all that garbage. So look, he's saying you're going to do this in nine hours. I'm saying bull crap okay if I if I put my settings on 60 millimeters a second which is way too high for this kind of a print and then I also made the layer heights 0.3 which would make it look like total garbage it still would take you like 18 hours if you put every part all on one build plate it would still take you like 18 hours just to do it as fast as possible. Now he's actually saying he did it in half the time that the original designer does it on average. Because right here in the uh, the parts list it says it takes on average 18 hours 59 minutes for the guy that designed this and probably has it pre-sliced to get it done. It, it takes him an average of basically 19 hours to do this but yet that guy did it in nine hours and had it assembled and handle polished and all that bull crap. I'd say whatever. You know, it's because people like him that, that give all the rest of us a bad name. And, you know, this is just a reality check on how much time you're going to have invested in this. Now, if we get back to reality here, I'll tell you how my experience went on a first try. So my second try is going to take, you know, less time because I already know what I'm doing. And I still have some of the files that are pre-sliced, especially the problem, the problematic uh, pieces. But in the real world, you print this thing at like 30 millimeters a second, bare minimum, a 0.15 layer height, okay? Because all of these mechanical parts, you're not going to want to have to sand them when you're done just to make them fit together or, or add material where you need it because it is just built inaccurately. Uh, in reality, you would want to do like a little torture test to make sure that your machine was accurate and up to par before you even try this project because it is really, um, it snaps together really tightly. And I can tell you that for sure because although I have not assembled all of this gun, I assembled these two parts, okay? The trigger guard and the handle, all right? Now, when you push that in to that hole, it's not coming back out. Okay, that's how tight and accurate this this print is. And so, just I want you guys to, to you know use some caution and be smart. Use your brains. Don't listen to people like that guy there, and and print this thing out right now. I'm gonna leave you like a Cura profile that that is uh, good for the CR10 to print this. Okay, if you're using the CR10, you can use my uh, Cura profile, and then I'll also leave some general numbers and description of, you know, uh, generally what to do with this. 
because th th this is going to take a long time. If you're going to invest a lot of time in this, uh, you should do it right the first time. So, anyways, this probably took me about five days to get all this stuff out because I still got like, a full time job, you know, kids and a wife and all the other things. You got to eat and sleep. So, in, in real life, on, on a single printer, going at the correct speed, it's going to take you close to five days to print this all out the first time. And a lot of that time is delayed in, um, you know, slicing it because there's a couple pieces that need uh, special attention that, that will get messed up. Uh, for example, the core of the body of the gun, this piece here on, on the bottom edge of this little uh, hourglass thing, it likes to come off. So if you don't use a, a brim setting on, on this or something, this piece is going to have to get reprinted a couple times, and that's two hours a pop. All right, so um, you need to remember to leave your cooling fan on for all these pieces, and there's certain pieces that need special attention, okay? And another one of those pieces that needs supports is this uh, guard here, and it needs it across the belly. So you can put a, a blocks on it, anything over 45 degrees, basically. And I'll put a block on these two parts, so that they don't print supports way tall, but just let it print supports across the bottom, and that one should be fine. Another part, let me see, where are you at? Uh, this one could use supports. There's a couple weird ones. Is it this one? Uh, I don't think it's this one. Nope. Where are you at, where are you at, where are you at? Did I drop a piece on the ground? Oh. This part right here, I don't know if you can see that, but that's a heck of an overhang for a precision part. And so you want to use supports everywhere on this particular piece. And it goes across the, the top of the gun, uh, barrel guard or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> um, you want to have your attraction settings right for the, all the screws. Um, some of the parts print better if a couple small pieces are with each other. That way they'll have enough time to cool by the time it comes back to them. Because if you try and print some tall thin parts all at once, they'll tend to be a little inaccurate, a little wavy. And you definitely want cooling on, like I said. So, you, you're going to have to have a checklist. And, and that's why it's really great that he printed off a parts list. Because trust me, at the end you're like, there's so many parts. Like you count them all and you're like short by one or two and you just have to go back through and, and, and just look and see what you're missing. Um, it's a big, big build, if you ask me, for a regular guy on one printer. Um, and so do it right the first time and you should be fine. I look at the picture of uh, this guy. He's got the gun kind of like... Uh, a close-up right here and you can see he goes in and out of focus watch Finished. It was fully assembled by night. ah see now you can see the front of it where it's really focused on the front right here and, and maybe it doesn't show up but you can look at his video and then down or dislike it while you're at it but just look at the front of the gun while, while he has it up close and it looks like <laughs> don't do what he did don't don't act like that guy. I, I just have no use for somebody like that. Anyways, uh, if you have any if you have any needs, comments, whatever, man, just type it up. Leave it down below the video. If you uh, expand the description, I'm sure I'll have some stuff in there for you. But other than that, um, use Solutech Black PLA and should be good to go. That's pretty much all there is to it. I'll catch you guys later.